Hello everyone and welcome to the part 1 of my discussion about chemical reactions. In this lesson video, I will be discussing the synthesis reaction and the single replacement. I am your teacher, Sir Mark Laroya. Synthesis reaction, or also known as combination, is a chemical reaction where two different elements are combined to form a new substance. Let's say we have element A plus element B. They form a new substance. Let's say it's called substance C. Example is the combination of sodium and chlorine where they form sodium chloride as well as the combination of hydrogen and oxygen as they form water. But more importantly, the question here is, how do we predict the product of this reaction? Let's find out. For the reaction of sodium and chlorine as they form sodium chloride, as you can see, sodium is in solid form, while chlorine is in gas form, and their product sodium chloride is also a solid. As you can see, for chlorine, it has a subscript of 2. 2 means that element chlorine is a diatomic element. A diatomic element is an element that comes by pair, meaning they are always in pair, like twins. The, the other diatomic elements are the hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, iodine, and bromine. Let's take a look at the ionic reaction between sodium and chlorine. Sodium has a charge of 1 plus while chlorine has a charge of negative 1. So they form an ionic compound called sodium chloride. This tells us the product or the possible product for the reaction between sodium and chlorine. Take note that this chemical equation that I am showing you right now is not yet balanced. For hydrogen and oxygen, as you can see, both elements have the subscript 2. That means hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic elements. We know that these two will form water. That's why the product of H2 plus O2 will be water in a liquid form. Again, this chemical equation is not yet balanced. Let us now balance the chemical equation for the sodium and chlorine reaction. For the synthesis reaction of sodium and chlorine, as you can see, in the reactant side, there is only one particle for sodium while there are two particles for chlorine. And on the product side, there is only one sodium as well as one particle for chlorine. In balancing chemical equation, we will look at the particle with the least number or the side where the particle has the least number. So in this case, we will focus on the chlorine on the product side. For us to balance the number of chlorine in our chemical reaction, we must put 2 before sodium chloride or should we say a coefficient light so that we can say that there will be two particles now for chlorine on the product side. But since we add 2, it also affects the number of sodium in our product side. So the number of sodium now is now in balance. To balance this, we also have to put 2 on the reactant side wherein if we're going to take a look there will be two sodium and two chlorine in the reactant side and now there is there are also two particles for sodium and chlorine so the chemical equation now is balanced for the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine as you can see both have subscript 2 it is because they are both diatomic elements. So let us take a look at their 
possible product. So H and Cl, they form HCl or hydrochloric acid. So this will be the product of the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine. Again, this chemical equation is not yet balanced. For calcium and bromine, Ca plus Br2, the element bromine has a subscript of 2, which means this element is a diatomic element. By ionic reaction, calcium has a charge of 2 plus, while bromine or bromide has a charge of negative. So, if we crisscross their charges, they will form CaBr2 or calcium bromide. So, this will be the chemical formula of the product between the reaction of calcium and bromine. If you take a look at this chemical equation, this is already balanced because in the reactant side, there is one calcium and two bromine as well as on the product side, there is also one calcium and two bromine. Let us now balance the chemical equation between the hydrogen and chlorine. In the reactant side, there are two hydrogen and two chlorine. While on the product side, there is only one hydrogen as well as one chlorine. To balance this chemical equation, it is pretty obvious that we should put 2 beside HCl or a coefficient like value of 2 to make this chemical equation balance so that there will be 2 hydrogen and 2 chlorine on the product side. And the chemical equation is now balance. Let us now proceed with the next chemical reaction that is single replacement or also known as substitution. This chemical reaction is a reaction between an ionic compound and a metal where the metal reactant will try to replace the metal of the ionic compound to form a new different ionic compound. So let's say we have AB plus C, this will produce CB plus A, where AB is an ionic compound and C is a metal. We know that in an ionic compound, A will be A is our metal and B is the non-metal. In this type of reaction, single replacement, the metal C will try to replace A to form a new product, new ionic compound CB, and then add the A. For single replacement or substitution, we have to consider the following. The activity series. This is a list of elements in decreasing order of their reactivity. In this list, it shows that Potassium is the most reactive, while gold is the least reactive. Let's say we have K. K or potassium can replace magnesium in, our, this, in this type of reaction, single replacement. It is because K is more reactive compared to magnesium. While for aluminum and calcium, Aluminum cannot replace calcium. It is because, based on our activity series, calcium is more reactive compared to aluminum. And also, sodium can replace iron. It is because sodium is more reactive compared to iron. And cobalt cannot replace manganese. It is because cobalt is less reactive compared to manganese. If this happened, that a metal cannot replace the metal of the ionic compound, reaction will not occur. I'll show you an example of a single replacement reaction or substitution. Let's say we have a ferric chloride or also known as iron 3 chloride, reacts with magnesium. 
Now, ferrichloride is formed by the ionic reaction of iodine with a charge of plus 3 and chloride with negative 1. Since magnesium is more reactive compared to iron, that means magnesium can replace iron and reaction will occur. So magnesium now will react with chloride. So they will form a chemical compound called magnesium chloride with a chemical formula of MgCl2. So that means the products of this reaction between ferric chloride and magnesium will be magnesium chloride plus iron. So magnesium chloride will be our new ionic compound plus iron. Take note that this reaction is not yet balanced. Let us now balance this chemical equation in the reaction between ferric chloride and magnesium. As you can see here, if we compare the number of particles of each element in our given chemical equation, the only element that is not balanced is the chlorine. To make this balance, we multiply 2 to our ferric chloride and then we multiply 3 to our magnesium chloride. So what will happen here is there will be 6 chlorine in the reactant side and 6 chlorine on the product side. However, because of this putting 2 and 3 to the ferric chloride and magnesium chloride respectively, they affected the number of magnesium and the iron from the reactant side and the product side. So what will happen here to balance the magnesium and iron, we also have to put 3 to magnesium and 2 to iron. So there will be 2 iron in the reactant side, 6 chlorine and 2 magnesium or rather 3 magnesium. While for while on the product side, we will be having 2 iron, 6 chlorine, and 3 magnesium. So the chemical equation now in the reaction between the ferric chloride and magnesium to produce magnesium chloride and iron will be 2 FeCl3 plus 3 Mg producing 3 MgCl2 plus 2 Fe. It is now balanced. Let's try another example. Let's say we have sodium chloride and cobalt. No reaction will occur. It is because cobalt is less reactive compared to sodium. That means that it is impossible for cobalt to replace sodium. For cupric sulfate or copper 2 sulfate reacts with zinc, reaction will occur It's because zinc is more reactive compared to copper. Cupric sulfate is formed due to the ionic reaction between copper with a charge of 2 and sulfate with a charge of 2 negative. Since zinc can replace copper, zinc now with a charge of 2 will combine with SO4 with a charge of 2 negative and their product will be zinc sulfate or ZnSO4. So for the reaction between cupric sulfate and zinc, they will produce the products zinc sulfate and copper. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new in chemistry about chemical reaction, specifically about synthesis, reaction, or combination, and single replacement. Watch for the part 2 of my discussion about chemical reaction. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share to your friends and classmates. The links of other lesson videos for math and science are in the description. Thank you very much. God bless and see you again next time.